this recording, we're going to demonstrate how to extract header information from invoices using SciGen's newest version of SciCapture. This is version 6.0. First, we're going to select the Capture Import button. Now we're going to select our profile, Capture Profile. Once we've done that, we're going to simulate the scan by selecting the appropriate file. We'll now start the process by selecting the Start Capture button either on the Quick Access Toolbar or on the ribbon itself, which is now the large green button. You can see now we've imported our documents, and they're all brought in as single page files. You see that here. The next step is we're going to run classification. So we're going to close the batch and let it move forward in the workflow. The next step, as I said, is classification. During this step, we're going to use Optical Character Recognition, or OCR, to make the documents intelligent. From there, we'll begin to pattern match the documents so we'll know which vendors we've brought in. Now, when that happens, you're going to see one has an exception. This particular vendor has not been configured. Someone in Accounts Payable, a business user, would select the document. They'll see on the right that it is Total Filtration Services, and they may look on the list to select them. You can see there is no Total Filtration Services on the list. So we're going to now define or teach the software how to find that information. First, we're going to type in the vendor name very easily. And then we're going to use a point and click rule builder to define the unique value found on the invoice. We like to use phone numbers or fax numbers because typically people will put them on the invoice. You could also use the vendor's name. So we'll grab total filtration services here. And we've now built two rules using regular expressions and point and click creation to set up the first page rule. Let's also do that for the last page rule so we know when the document will end. That way we don't have to use separator pages in this example. So now we have two rules built for last page as well. The next step is to validate the smart zones. Those green boxes are now tied to the index fields where we're going to do auto extraction. They did not exist prior to us selecting that tab. We can now open one of those uh, smart zones just for verification and see that we are anchoring on the word total and extracting the currency. From here, we could stretch the zone if it's going to float up and down the page. We could also move that zone around and maybe left to right if you wish. If it's going to move left to right, you can do that. But it's very easy to, to massage the size of that zone to match your invoices. This is why it's important to have a business user do this, by the way, because they understand invoices. Now that we've saved the work, you can see we have a green checkbox. It's been defined. If this was very difficult, we could reject that image that does not delete it. One important thing to note, the green checkbox means that the vendor has been defined, even though the batch is still open. If another business user would happen to scan in an invoice from the same vendor, they would not be asked to redefine that profile. It is now done after we define it one time. At this point of the process now, we'll move forward in the workflow where we're going to auto extract index values from those invoices. We're going to capture things like invoice number and invoice date, uh, total amount, and so on. Once that's done, the process will stop in the quality assurance step. Now, this is an important step once we get to QA. Uh, what we're going to do there is ask the business users to validate the extracted data. So as they click on a cell on the left, they're going to be able to zoom into that document to, so it jumps right to the document first, zooms in, shows you the anchor point in green and the extracted data in red. So as I bounce around from different uh, index fields here, you can see I'm jumping to document to document and zooming right in. Now one document was missing a PO number. The information on the left can be live, so you can go ahead and add, add that in there if you know it. And then once you're done with this process, you move forward in the, vo in the workflow again. In this case, we're going to build searchable PDFs. Now, not everyone does that. If you don't want to do content searching of, a, of an intelligent PDF, uh, this would be an image over hidden text PDF, then you don't have to do that step of the workflow. You can just push image-only TIFFs or image-only PDFs into your repository. And speaking of publishing the data, that's what we call migration. So that's what we're going to do at this step, where we're going to push these images and the metadata 
right into a repository. Now, SciCapture supports well over 50 different enterprise content management or ECM platforms. This one happens to be going to Office 365. It could also be SharePoint or many, many other different platforms. We could also publish the metadata, but not the images, into a line of business applications such as SAP or maybe PeopleSoft or QuickBooks. So that's how we get the data from our system into your line of business application and your document management system.